Okay, it's 10 o'clock and I have a, a quorum. I am expecting Mr. Nelson. In fact, I think he may have just pulled into the parking lot. Mr. Peterson is sick, so we want to keep him in our prayers that he feels much better as the day goes on. It is 10 o'clock. It is February 27th. As authorized by Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code, this meeting may be convened into closed executive session for the purposes of seeking confidential legal advice from the city attorney on any item on the agenda at any time during the meeting. The city of Bastrop reserves the right to reconvene, recess, or realign the regular session or called executive session or order of business at any time prior to adjournment. It's 10.01. I'm calling this meeting to order. And we are very happy to have two of our fifth graders with us today. They're from Bastrop Intermediate School. Their teacher, Gregory Maxwell, has brought with them Benjamin Vaquera and Emma Griesenbeck. And I'm going to ask them to rise. They're going to be leading us in both of the pledges, but I want to tell you a little bit about them. You need to take a really good look at them because we're pretty sure one of them is going to be mayor but soon. They both like science, and Benjamin likes to play baseball, and he is so good at baseball, he plays every position at baseball. And Emma plays baseball, or, uh, softball, volleyball, basketball. Apparently, if there's a ball involved, Emma is involved. So these these two fine fifth graders are going to lead us in both of our pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. Can we give them a round of applause? And if you would please remain standing, um, Pastor Taylor Schote is going to lead us in the invocation today. Taylor is the president of the Bast Bastrop Christian Ministerial Alliance, and I may be stealing his thunder, but um, the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast is Thursday at 6.30 a.m. at the Methodist Church. You can buy tickets at the door, and I know on behalf of myself and Taylor, we would like to see everyone there Thursday morning. Pastor Schote? Can we all say amen? Yeah, thank you. Father, we come before you this morning, and God, we're grateful for the rain, and we're grateful for this day, but Father, ultimately, we're grateful for you and your goodness to our city. God, we know there's a, a light agenda today, but Lord, it's still work that needs to be done, so we pray for your wisdom, your guidance, your direction as decisions are made, and uh, the future of Bastrop is presented before us. Lord, we also know this, that today's a special day, and there's something going on this afternoon that we really could use your favor on, and we're just going to ask that you do that and let Main Street be the winner. Father, we come before you, and again, we thank you for our leadership here in Bastrop, those that put their uh, lives on the line each day. We pray for your protection, your blessing upon them, and God, let Bastrop continue to be the greatest city in the state of Texas and around the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The kids are reluctantly going back to school, but it's really appreciated them coming today. Um, okay, mayor's report is the next thing, and you can go to the next slide. If I have the clicker, I don't know it. Andreas, do I have a clicker? Um, there, there's no, uh, oh, it didn't, my report didn't make it? Well, that makes me very sad, because I turned it in on time. Um, okay, well, I will do it off, my, um, off of my notes. Um, early voting is underway for the primaries. I have already voted. You should have already voted. And if you haven't voted, shame on you. And make sure that you vote. And um, the election is March 6. Make sure you participate. My only response, my only comment is if you don't vote, do not gripe. That's just, that's, those two things go together. Um, we had our joint meeting with the library board. And when I looked at the um, operations report last week, I noticed there were some things on the uh, library report that I thought I would share with everybody. They had 2,075 patrons last week, and I'm not sure if we really associate that many people going through the library. And they, their makerspace program with the um, 
3D printer and stuff, they had one of their classes and had 15 people participate in that. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the library. And I also wanted to give a shout out to BPNL, who again, last week had a week of zero outages. Uh, the years that I was a facility manager, no one ever calls you and says, the temperature in my office is great, the lights are working, I'm really having a wonderful day and I know it's because of you. And I don't think people call BPNL and thank them for not having outages. So. I just wanted to give a shout out to them, and it's okay, but Andreas, if it's that, okay, oh, there you are. Okay, thanks. So, yes, I know I'm not the only person in the world that knew it was Valentine's Day since we had our last council meeting, but if you know my husband, you know he does not, he's not a flower kind of guy, so I, yes, I had to take a picture of him, and it was really, really nice to get him. It was a super busy time and it was really nice to have them. Some of us get flowers all the time, but um, those really meant a lot to me because um, I just really appreciated it. And then you see Texas setting the example for DC once again. You have a Republican governor, a Republican representative, and a Democrat senator, and they don't care about party politics. They care about what's best for their constituents, and we just really and truly appreciated them putting the video together. Um, to put things in perspective for our small business revolution, we had 54 stories that had what they call impressions, which means somebody has looked at it, viewed a video, clicked it, whatever, of almost 15 million impressions. It was 14.8. I just went ahead and rounded that up to 15 million, which was just super impressive. Can't begin to thank all of the people who were involved in it. So um, everybody who voted, everybody who got a friend to vote, thank you so very much. And there'll be much, much more about this this afternoon. We find out at 2.30 if we're the winner on top of the winner that we already are. So it's just been, a, the revolution has hit here. We just don't know if they are, if they're going to join ours or if we're going to join theirs. On February 15th, I went to the coffee chat that um, Barry Edwards had, very dynamic interim superintendent. And if you haven't had an opportunity to visit with him, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, council had joint meetings with both Historic Landmark Commission and the Library Board, as I already mentioned. Um, if you go to the next slide, these were the things that I did between turning in my report and um, council today. The chamber banquet was awesome. You may have seen in the paper on Saturday, there were a bunch of pictures from the banquet and congratulations to Becky Womble and her staff for a successful banquet. I was the guest speaker for the um, Junior ROTC banquet and if you've never been to a military ball, you, you need to go to a military ball. The sword arch and the whole deal, it was just really an outstanding evening. My husband and I both really enjoyed it. Uh, last Monday, seems like three years ago, but it was last Monday we did some Good Day Austin filming. It was great to feature um, Simply Sweet and Copper Shot and, and let folks see how great Bastrop is. Um, also last Monday I went to Larry Turner's Celebration of Life. If you are a very young person, you may not know Larry Turner. If you have been around Bastrop for a while, um, you know Larry Turner. And it was held at the high school cafeteria and it was there because we needed a space that big for all the people who that Larry Turner had touched their lives so it was really a, a neat service and I appreciate Judge Eskew um, he took care he ran that service it was really really nice the Boy Scout troop I have never been asked harder questions since I was on the campaign trail than attending the Boy Scout troop trying to get their um, badge for civics so um, I, I studied up for that thankfully. We had our drainage workshop last week. Um, past Thursday we went to the out to the federal prison. They are such great neighbors and um, there'll be some more work coming up with them. Mr. Peterson joined the city manager myself and um, Chief Adcock, we had a great time. We always enjoy going to that. I attended a Bastrop County Cares meeting, went to a fundraiser. Last Friday, we had the best breakfast with Smithville. Empty Bowl, probably most of the people in the audience attended Empty Bowl. There was not a parking spot in the convention center, and it was some 
outstanding, outstanding soup. So um, if you missed that, it's always the last Saturday of February. Put that on your schedule for next year. Uh, yesterday I was at the Bastrop County Commissioner's Court meeting and we got um, the Commissioner's Court approved Bastrop County joining the Texas Housing Foundation. So we're very pleased with that. Had the BDC monthly meeting last night. It says the, the BDC launches today. It was when I put the report together, but that has been rescheduled for March 20th. If you'll go to the Economic Development website, it'll give you the information. They've got more people signed up now that they've moved the date to March, so that's really going to be a great meeting. I would encourage you to go. Clearly, you figured out that Council's at 10 o'clock today. Thank you for being here, and I'm sure we'll see lots of folks at 2 o'clock. Um, coming up between now and the next council meeting, I won't read through all of these. You can see that it's going to be fairly busy. One thing that I would like to bring to your attention that's not on the schedule, on March 9th, and that is a Friday, BEDC is having their first quarterly coffee chat. I usually like to go to those, but I will be at the TML elected <coughs> officials conference in San Antonio. I will be there with council member Nelson and council member Ennis. It is, um, I know that our city attorney is always encouraged when we have people participating in those conferences. It's a really good thing for all of our elected officials to do, and I know um, all of us go to as many of those things as we possibly can. So with that, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Schiff, I had you on my list to start with you. Do you have anything to add? I would just add that uh, I was super impressed with the Empty Bowl project. I think it was the best attendance ever in support of the food pantry here. I think it's just a very, very worthy cause. Uh, the good news is, is that it was absolutely packed. The bad news is I got there late and there was almost nothing left, but uh, that I think was good news as far as the, uh, the group was concerned. Uh, great cause. Anyhow, that's what I have. It was at the convention center for the first time, and it was really nice to see that packed. Council Member Ennis? I attended a lot of the same things the mayor did, uh, uh, but one thing I would like to particularly uh, point out is the drainage study that our city manager uh, and her staff organized for us. It was probably one of the most educational and uh, filled in all the gaps uh, that uh, I would imagine we'd have questions for. I'm sure there are more questions out there, but I just want to compliment her and her staff for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ennis. Councilmember Jones? Uh, I uh, would like to thank the Library Board and the Historic Landmark uh, people. They just, they do an outstanding job in those meetings with them, with them were, were really good. Um, I'm probably the only person here that didn't attend the Empty Bowl, but I did attend the Bastrop Bears track meet all day Saturday, and um, we had at least one person that would make the NFL turn and look, so we're hoping for good things with our football next year, but we have some pretty fast, outstanding guys on, on our track team, and that was, that was a lot of fun to watch. Thank you, Councilmember Jones. City Manager? Um, I know that there are a number of people that are curious about the follow-up to the chickens and roosters that we promised um, in February, but um, we found out we were in the top 10 on December 27th, and we'll find out if we won the Small Business Revolution on February 27th. If you do that, the math on that, that is a straight-up 60 days. So if you'll just take the calendar and shift it 60 days. Um, we plan to have a report um, to council as a follow-up at the end of March, uh, but we'll probably carry that over with a second report in April just because the small business Re revolution has taken um, quite a bit of our capacity. Uh, it took some time to get some contracts and things drawn up so we could execute and then get insurance. And so uh, things are in place and beginning to mobilize, so we'll give a report on that in March. The, the only pr problem with picking up the two months is she has to put it down on top of the same two months because the fiscal year is still coming. So um, we're, we're going to be busy, but I know we're going to get it all done. Okay, I'm on the bottom of page one. Received presentation on the unaudited comprehensive monthly financial report for the period ending January 31st. Ms. Waldron. Yes, good morning. Um, January is 
over and that is four months into our budget overall our performance at a glance is looking very good we have a lot of positives and just a few warnings the economic indicators for this month that we looked up are, um, are all positive. The only one that um, <clears throat> shied negative was the statewide unemployment, and it was very mar it was was very minimal. Noteworthy this month. Um, I always have to try to you know find something to put in here because I put this section in, and now I'm kind of committed to, to trying to find something. And sometimes it. It's, uh, but we did get a notice from the Texas Department of Transportation that they would be giving us money back, which is always nice. And it took me a few uh, few hours to figure out what they were giving us back. Um, it goes back to 03 and 05 when we paid our right-of-way uh, portion into building the highways through town. And so now they've done their math 10 years later. and they are giving us, uh, I guess, what we paid in too much based on what they had to spend for the right-of-way acquisition. So we will be setting that aside and designating that for future Texas Department of Transportation participation that we have to be a part of. Mayor and Council, you might note that um, the trail project to the state is in TxDOT right-of-way. So Tracy has um, earmarked that in the Innovation Fund as a match for that particular project. So we're taking TxDOT money and reinvesting in TxDOT projects. We just need TxDOT to find some more money to give us. That would right. be good. So budget summary, all funds as a whole. Um, as I stated earlier, um, all of the funds are looking good. There's only a few warnings. The only negative is the impact fees. Just want to reiterate that we don't really have control over the impact fund. If people are developing and paying impact, then, um, then we receive it. So sometimes the budget and the forecast for that particular fund is kind of a shot in the dark because we're not exactly sure what what's going to come of that, but that's really the only negative fund. As far as uh, expenditures go, all of it is in green except for the Hunter's Crossing pit, and that has to do with some legal and some consulting fees that we will have to address going um, into the rest of the year. General fund revenue to expenditures is positive. We. Um, We've received more than was forecasted, and we've spent um, way less than was forecasted, so that's always uh, leaving us in the positive. Sales tax re revenue for the first time this year is in the positive. We are um, in the plus on that, um, just, just shy of uh, 1%. Property tax is also positive, so we are up uh, almost 4% off forecast. Water wastewater revenue fund, revenues to expenditures, they are also positive. We have um, spent less than we've received. The revenues are also um, in the positive, just, just shy of 1% um, between actual to forecast. Electric revenue fund is um, revenue to expenditure in the positive, I think it's a net position of around 5.7%, so that's good. Our electric fund revenue is in a warning category. Um, actual to forecast is just a negative 2%, so we will continue to watch that fund. Hotel occupancy tax as a whole is uh, a net position of 17%, so we're, we're uh, not spending what we have forecasted in that fund, um, but we're also just slightly about 4% behind in forecasted revenue. Ms. Uh, Waldron, mm -hmm. uh, uh, back to the electric fund real quick. That evens out as, uh, as the summer comes toward us, right? It should, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. I'm sorry. And then um, we have our legal fees paid year to date in the report as well. Any questions for me? Council, any questions? Thank All you, right. Ms. Waldron. I think you stay here, don't you? Um, I can, yes. Okay. Receive comprehensive annual financial report for the period ending September 30th, 2017, which includes the independent <laughs> auditor's report presented by the independent audit firm of Patilla, Brown, and Hill. So we do have Paula Lau here to present the, the 
comprehensive annual financial report. You have the bound copy and also the governance report at your dice. Thank you, Tracy. Good morning. I'm uh, Paula Lau with Patillo Brown and Hill, and I'm here today to present to you the comprehensive annual financial report for fiscal year 2017. And just want to give you provide you a little bit of background of kind of what our audit process is and then provide you with the results of the annual financial report as well um, as far as the audit is concerned um, our process typically what we do as um, auditors uh, we come out during the summer months uh, for approximately one week and we do certain processes we look at certain processes and procedures in order to plan in uh, our audit um, in order to, to plan our audit in order to figure out if there's any type of material um, misstatement to these financial statements. Um, as a part of that process, what we do is we consider these um, controls that the city has, and if we come across something that we feel like um, those controls would not detect a material misstatement to these financial statements, we are required to present that to you today. And I'm very happy to let you know that we do not have anything of that nature to bring to your attention. Um, so during those, um, that week during the summer, we, we perform procedures to plan our audit and we come out um, in December is um, for approximately three weeks and we perform more detailed um, procedures in order to look at the numbers and, and feel comfortable with them and they're meeting our expectation as well as your expectations as well. Um, but as was mentioned to you, you have the bound copy in front of you of the comprehensive annual financial report. And on page one of this document, you will find our independent auditor's report. Um, basically, what this report says is that we have audited the accompanying financial statements in accordance with government auditing standards as well as generally accepted auditing standards. And uh, we have come to determine that these financial statements are materially correct. And we rendered an unmodified opinion, which is the highest opinion that can be rendered, is known as a clean audit. I wanted to point out just a couple of um, numbers within this report to you. In particular, looking at the general fund on page, page uh, 17. On page 17, there you will find um, your governmental funds, spelling out um, the revenues and expenditures and other financing sources and uses of each one of your major funds as well as a, a total column for your non-major funds as well. And at the bottom, towards the bottom of the page, you can see that the general fund, the debt service fund, and the total of all of your non-major funds had a decrease in fund balance this year. Um, each of these decreases were planned decreases as well. Except for the hotel motel fat tax fund, you can see they had an increase this particular year. Um, even though the general fund did decrease by approximately $85,000, the general fund fund balance um, does still appear to be healthy as well. Uh, flipping over to a couple more pages, looking at um, the proprietary funds. Um, in other words, um, the water, wastewater, and the uh, BPNL. On page 21, you'll find the operating statement for these type of funds. And as you can see, Unlike um, the other governmental funds, these, each of these funds did had to have an increase in fund balance in that position. You can see those ending that positions as well. And one thing to uh, remember when you're looking at this particular page, on page 21, that net position ending also includes like capital assets and long-term debt. So probably a little bit more of a, an indication of what your ending net position is that you might be looking at a little more liquid is on page 20. You can see in that category of net position, you can see an unrestricted net position there. And so the total enterprise funds had approximately $8.5 million of unrestricted net position in each of those funds. Um, that's just a brief summary of, of this comprehensive annual finance report. Um, as I mentioned to you, that it is a clean report as well. Um, we definitely want to make sure that we do thank Tracy and her team. They did a great job and um, they provide us the information that we need in order to provide you with a clean report and this detailed information that you see in this report as well. We appreciate that. And if any of you have any questions, please let me know as well. Thank you very much, Ms. Loud. I, I think one of the biggest things that we do as council is the community entrusts us with their tax dollars and their sales tax dollars to spend them wisely and to make sure that we have transparency. And I think Tracy and her team 
do an outstanding job, and I think you just confirmed that with a clean audit. So a round of applause for Ms. Waldron and her team. See, manager? I, I want to echo that. There's a couple of things about this that I think are important. First is you get your audit the second meeting in February. Um, that's unprecedented in most cities. We're fortunate to get it in March or April and sometimes have to beg after that. I think that is a testament to the quality of staff that you have with Tracy and her team. Um, two is, um, to echo your statements, finance, in my opinion, should always be known as the Department of Accountability. Because, honestly, the most important thing we do are, um, is to be good stewards of the public's money. Um, because if there isn't a trust of the money, the rest of what we do probably doesn't matter. And so the fact that we have an um, audit that is um, as clean as this one and there are no material findings, um, again, is a testament to um, the role that Tracy plays in this organization. Um, her teammates give her a hard time about it, but at the end of the day, they don't dare not do what she says. And for that, I'm grateful. So um, it, it's not only uh, Tracy and her team, but it's the organization that appreciates our mission and our charge. And we appreciate them as well as our, our um, auditors with Patillo, Brown, and Hill. Um, because again, that checks and balances in the system is um, supremely important to the stewardship we owe our public. So I think it's a job well done. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, we're on 6C, receive monthly report from Visit Bastrop. Mr. Lockett. Good morning, Mayor, City Councilors, Madam City Manager. Thank you. Before we get into the report, I want to echo um, the anxiety that we're all feeling about the announcement later today. And I want to give you a perspective. Mayor, you mentioned it before with the impressions that have been generated by our activity. Uh, I've not seen a community come together uh, like this one has come together uh, in terms of pushing the message. Uh, what's so important about this is Bastrop has been on the radar screen media-wise in the past, as you know, only too well, and that's because of bad news. This was for the first time in a long time how we could get on a national platform and get exposed about positive news. So I have a little different take on today's outcome. First of all, should we win, and our expectations are very high about that, it gives us a continuation of that good news platform to be able to expose not only as the deluxe corporation starts the process to uh, help us uh, flip uh, our community, if you will, in a positive way, uh, but to be able to talk about why this is such a good exposure for the destination, plus the TV coverage that will come along with that is priceless. We'll be able to leverage that. So we have a plan of action as Visit Bastrop to be able to leverage a win in a way that we can never afford to do or, or have the capability of doing. But what if we don't win? We've already won to a sense of degree by that level of exposure and a positive news. We'll be able to leverage that in our announcement and exposure to having out of thousands and thousands of communities that participated in competition, we made it into the top five, and not only did we make it in the top five, but if for some reason we don't make it number one, I'm pretty sure I know where we're going to be if we don't do that. We're, a we're able to take that good news message and leverage that and continue the social media messaging as well as some of our uh, paid advertising that we did along with this. So as far as we're concerned, we've got two avenues that we can go, and both of them are positive news. The one where we win is much greater you know, I recognize that, so our fingers and toes are crossed, and I can't hardly wait. <laughs> so on our report, um, the occupancy report, I'll point out, um, is delayed uh, because of the reporting process that Smith Travel uh, has on it. So you're seeing November's numbers. November uh, was a nice 3.8% increase uh, in uh, occupancy. 
I can tell you I've seen the numbers for uh, December and January now, and those are both trending positive as well. So uh, it, it looks good for the hotel uh, occupancy tax collections as we're moving forward. Uh, on our comp set, you can notice that not everybody had increases. There were a significant number uh, during that period that had decreases. In that comp set, uh, we're not allowed to tell you who that is publicly. We can tell it to you privately at any point in time. But it's uh, communities that are about the similar size of Bastrop, as well as some of the surrounding areas uh, that we uh, feed off their market sector. This is our convention sales uh, for December, uh, fiscal uh, year to date. And I want to point out the lead production for December. We sent out two leads uh, with room night potentials of 1,944 and total attendance of 10,250. That's very high. And it doesn't mean that that attendance potential, we can't house all those people. What it's being generated from is from the Tough Mudder, which will be May 5th event, which brings in several thousand people into our area, as well as Pedal Through the Pines, which will be March 10th. This is the first time for either of these events that Bastrop has been represented with our hotel product to be considered for staying. We leveraged, in the case of Tough Mudder, Toughest Mudder, which, by the way, will be televised on CBS nationally um, for that midnight start event. Um, it's not live, thank goodness, uh, but it's a it's delayed broadcast. Um, this, using the investment uh, that the city has made into Tough Mudder, uh, we were able to leverage that and for the first time have our hotels be listed as preferred hotels uh, that, and we are taking the role of the host uh, for this event. We met with the advance team recently, and uh, that was the first time that has happened, and we're very excited about the partnership and moving forward and trying to get a better economic uh, impact from the attendees that are coming in for that event. Same thing happened with Pedal Through the Pines. It was the first time that we'd had an outreach opportunity to have our hotels be represented for that event. These are some of the convention sales initiatives that uh, Shane has been involved with. Um, and it's basically uh, been trying to help. Uh, you can see the uh, Tough Mudder uh, discussion, the hotel needs for the events. Um, and we've been attending trade shows and conferences. So we've been very busy uh, getting the word out about our meeting and group potential for Bastrop. How do we do it? When we go to a trade show, this is your brand new first look at our trade show booth. So you see it's in three segments. You have the Visit Bastrop with a background on the left. You have our podium, uh, which is themed, and then you have the display on the right side that uh, use he what we call hero shots of the destination to try to convey a sense of place for what this destination is. So that is up and we're using it in the trade shows that we're attending. We also have a message that we distribute. Small town, big city amenities. When you think about that for a minute, there's very small towns that can boast an international airport 15 to 20 minutes away. There's very few small towns, if any, that can boast a world-class resort as part of their community. We can, and we do. This is our leverage. We also are a Texas original. That goes back onto our history. So these are the flyers that we try to be able to convey certain key messages. Meetings here are simple. Getting here is easy, and we're a Texas original. And we have small town charm, big city amenities. Marketing. We had 31 features that featured, and this is again for December, that it, uh, ran about 8.2 million impressions. S calendar listings for uh, all of our events, both local, counting Austin, as well as uh, outside of the Austin market. This is our website activity, and it's trending very positively. You can see that our website was very busy leading up through the uh, Lost Pines Christmas celebration, and then obviously right at Christmas, and it's normal for, for this industry during the Christmas period of time, people have already uh, made their decisions, what they're doing, where they're going, they're already there, so they're not using our website as much. What's interesting, uh, our, our users are staying the same. 
It's 55 uh, to 56 uh, percent female, uh, and ages 25 to 44. That trend is staying the same. I don't see too much change for that. It's really nice to see Houston outperforming uh, the other destinations because Houston has overnight uh, visitation possibility, whereas Austin is more of a day trip uh, for us because of the close proximity. Um, the day trip is very important to us because it helps drive our sales tax revenue. So it's important for this destination as well as the overnight. But the overnight is our target. Uh, it, it drives the hotel occupancy tax collections and that's what drives our marketing budget to be able to do that. Um, just a little bit about our sessions. We are having, uh, uh, again, a trend that is common in, across the United States, which is the majority of our use is by mobile. And that is very, very important uh, because that means that people are uh, going to our website and finding out what to see and do through their mobile devices and they're, they're engaged in our product. We're also seeing that one of our top events, top pages, our calendar of events. That's why it's so important that we have the, the best calendar of event listing for all things to see and do uh, in Bastrop. Uh, we're getting really good um, uh, click-throughs and engagement on our post. These are just some of the posts that you can see. Uh, Welcome to Bastrop, Texas, and a Texas original with a modern-day spirit. Uh, our uh, Sugar Shack uh, promotion about Santa being there, things like that, um, are what we use to leverage why we're a desirable place to come and visit. We also boost our posts, and that helps get us a greater reach as we're going out. You can see that it's time to dust off those ugly Christmas sweaters, uh, reach 2,000 people. Uh, we're using the events that Main Street and downtown Bastrop put together to leverage a reason why you should come into our community. These are how what we look like and what we try to use are very, very good graphics. What the city invested in to bring for the Lost Pines Christmas event and do snow was a, was a way that we leveraged us as being desirable to come uh, and bring your family to Bastrop. You can see the ugly sweater. That's how we represented uh, that pub crawl. And then our uh, historic uh, house collections, of course, our Christmas tree. Uh, Mayor, your uh, great presentation with KVU. Uh, I'll shout out Collins, great photograph that he was able to, we were able to use that to again get some great exposure uh, of the destination in a way that many people probably never thought to take a look at Bastrop. Uh, of course, the Cookie Crawl, uh, River of Lights Parade. Uh, these are, and then this was when we first found out that we were in the top 10 in the small business revolution and we started our first of many many posts about that activity and then uh, you're starting to see some activity about the Texas uh, our Bastrop Music Festival that's coming up so it just gives you an idea of how we're trying to represent the destination and how important our events are in terms of giving us a platform to say y'all come visit and come spend your money in our community so you can see that our strategic marketing initiatives were Lost Pine Christmas, the Bastrop Music Festival, I mentioned Tough Mudder, website, brand development, and social media. So that is a um, quick overview because I know we're all excited to go uh, figure out what we're going to find out here in a little bit. Um, I, I just want to kind of tie uh, Dale's presentation back to some of the um, comments that we made last council meeting about how our experiential uh, activities are changing based on our demographics and whether it is a retail experience or rather it is a travel experience the population now is looking for that event that something that they can't get somewhere else and so I'm delighted to see that um, we're now seeing with Visit Bastrop the connection between all of what we've seen as individual silos and beginning to market that so that um, our public and our region is beginning to see us as a place to come. Uh, they'll have a different experience every time they, they are here because we have so many wonderful um, special events as well as some of, some of our what we call staples that are now doing programming that mirror those events. So I think your numbers are beginning to show that that is working. It is. Marketing does take a little bit of time. 
Um, so what's important is to look, as you mentioned, look at the metrics of the engagement that we're getting. And uh, we're very pleased at, the, at, at basically our first quarter uh, to be starting to get the engagement that we're getting. And again, a lot of that is because of the city's commitment to the small business revolution process and the level of engagement that you as individual city councilors, city manager, and especially the mayor have put into bringing this. It's given us a platform to get out there and leverage that, and we will continue to do that. Thank you very much, Mr. Lockett. Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Lockett? Seeing none. I wish you. you talking faster made 2 o'clock get here faster, but I don't think it works that way. <laughs> okay. I we're, tried. Yeah, I appreciate that. We're at citizen comments. Madam Secretary, do we have anyone signed up for citizen comments? No one has signed up, Mayor. All right. Then we're moving on to the consent agenda. Council, do you have anything you would like pulled from the consent agenda? Audience, is there anything you'd like pulled from the consent agenda? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll read the consent agenda. The consent agenda reads as follows. Item 8A, consider action to approve City Council minutes from the February 13, 2018 regular meeting, February 15, 2018 Joint Council and Historic Landmark Commission meeting, and February 15, 2018 Joint Council and Bastrop Public Library Board meeting. Item 8B, consider action to approve the second reading of Ordinance Number 2018-02 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, granting a conditional use permit to allow a mini warehouse use for lot one of the Beck, NHP, and Procop subdivision, section two, located at 510 West SH-71 within the city limits of Bastrop, Texas, as shown in Exhibit A and Exhibit B, setting out conditions, repelling con conflicting provisions, providing a severability clause, and establishing an effective date. This concludes the consent agenda. I move for approval of all items on the consent agenda. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion from Mayor Pro Tem Schiff, a second from Council Member Ennis, Madam Secretary. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Schiff? Yes. Council Member Ennis? Yes. Council Member Jones? Yes. Okay, we're moving on to items for individual consideration were at the bottom of page 2, 9A, consider action to approve resolution number R2018-13 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, extending term of appointment by the Mayor to the Zoning Board of Adjustments as required in Section 3.08 of the City's Charter and establishing an effective date. This is 100% my fault. At the last Council meeting, you guys approved Pablo Cerna on the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and I incorrectly put that his term would end in 2019. It was a cut and paste problem. There is no reason that it, his term should end on 2020. The cleanest legal way is for you guys to approve this resolution. All it does is make him do the three-year term that he should have done when I did the... Move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Council Member Jones. Second. I have a second from Council Member Ennis. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Council Member Jones? Yes. Council Member Ennis? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schiff? Yes. Thank you very much. I'll try very hard to not let that happen again. 9B, consider action to approve. It's, you have to publicly tell the whole world that you messed up. It's not that much fun, so I'll be more careful in the future. Consider action to approve resolution number R2018-14 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving an interlocal agreement with Bastrop County for a drainage improvement project on Shiloh Road, approximately 700 feet from the intersection of Shiloh Road and State Highway 304 in Bastrop, Texas, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents once interlocal agreement is reviewed and approved by the city attorney, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Mr. Job. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is just uh, some small changes that's in your packet. The county actually had some purchasing uh, issues that their auditor caught. We had to change some verbiage. Uh, this is just cleaning that up so we can stay on the March 1st schedule. Um, and this is just a location map to remind everybody where it's at. Uh, they're at Shiloh and 304, and you see the area of the floodplain. It's actually going to be uh, quite an increase in culverts, and all we need to do is get this approved. You see the changes in red, and then we can move forward. Thank you, Mr. Job. And just so everyone remembers, one of the things, one of our responsibilities is to make sure that we do all we can to protect property. And as a reminder, for those of you who don't know where Shiloh Road is, the folks that are the most happiest about this live in Hunter's Crossing. All right, that's correct. So, is there? Do you have any questions for Mr. Job? 
Move to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. I have a, a motion to approve from Council Member Jones, a second from Mayor Pro Tem Schiff. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Council Member Jones? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schiff? Yes. Council Member Ennis? Yes. All right. We're at 9C, hold public hearing and consider action to approve resolution number R2018-12 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, granting a variance to the Bastrop Code of Ordinances, Article 4.02.005, sale of alcoholic beverages, separation requirements from church, public or private school, or public hospital on property located at 601 Chestnut Street, Hashtag C. I've just hashtag small business revolutions. All my eyes can see within the city limits of Bastrop, Texas, establishing an effective date. Miss Land. Hello. Good morning. All right. So the location requesting the variance is better known as Neighbors Kitchen and Yard. Um, <laughs> as we all know by now, alcohol sales must be allowed by the zoning district. Must be in a permitted location per the code and must meet the separation requirements. All right, downtown, the Calvary Episcopal School now meets the definition of a private school, and that triggers um, these variances. All right, um, schools are measured in a direct line from nearest property line to nearest property line. Um, this is pretty close to across Chestnut, um, so it definitely is with you know less than 300 feet. Um, City Council, of course, may grant variances to those separation requirements. All right, so I know we've had many conversations. We're like, neighbors is an existing business. Why are, why are we doing this, right? Um, there are exceptions to when you get the variance. Um, neighbors has changed ownership, which is one of the things that triggers you to relook at all of the distances and requirements. All right, so. Um, that new ownership requires new permits through TABC. Um, our second exception in our code does not apply to the situation. And our code specifically calls out a change in ownership requiring us to look at this again. Right. As a reminder, these are your variance approval criteria. Um, enforcement would create a, an instance that is not in the best interest to the public, constitutes waste or inefficient use of land or other resources, creates an undue hardship on the applicant for a license or permit, does not serve its intended purpose, is not effective or necessary, or for any other reason that council um, determines is in the best interest of the community. All right. Neighbors, it's downtown, um, just like the last two. It meets the zoning and permitted location requirements. Neighbors is also a gathering place for the community. Um, and should you guys choose to approve this variance, it would allow the restaurant to continue serving food, beer, wine, and liquor as they currently do. It's a downtown staple. Um, neighbors is a pizza, pizza kitchen, music venue, event space. Uh, they serve food, craft beverages, Great view of the Colorado River. I don't know how many advertisements I've seen for Bastrop that are that view. Um, so that's a little bit about neighbors. Recent variances approved are on the other side of Chest or on, yeah, on Chestnut Street, um, Bastrop Beer Company and Main Street Cafe. All right. They have sent in a letter to the city. Everybody has been notified according to all applicable laws and we are here for a public hearing. As of the time of this um, presentation, we have not received any public comments for or against. Any questions? I'm not, do you, do you have any questions, Council? I need to officially open the public hearing. Madam Secretary, do we have anyone signed up to speak at the public hearing? No one has signed up. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? I need you to come to the microphone. Have you filled out? Your and please, uh, I need you to speak at the microphone and please introduce yourself, Ms. Hoover. All right. My name is Judith Hoover. I live on Wilson Street. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention the city ordinance and some of the information that was provided here is in the ordinance. Well, all of it is, but 
One thing that was not provided was in that same section, it says this section does not apply to a holder of a license or permit who also holds a food and beverage certificate covering premises that are located within the 300 feet. So I'm just questioning why this has to have a variance because it seems to me that's taken care of in the ordinance. It's a restaurant, there's a food and beverage permit. Thank you. To address that comment, um, that is one of the exceptions as mentioned, um, but the food and beverage certificate referred to in that ordinance is the TABC food and beverage certificate, um, and the new owner has to apply for new permits when they open a new location, they're location specific, um, and so because of that, they actually have to get a new food and beverage certificate. This isn't a continuation of one. Does that make sense? And the city attorney is nodding yes. Yes, I agree. Okay. That's an accurate description. Okay. Anyone else want to make a comment during our public hearing? Seeing no one, I'm officially closing the public hearing and would love to entertain a motion. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Councilmember Ennis. A second. I have a second from Mayor Pro Tem Schiff. Is there any further discussion, Council? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Councilmember Ennis. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schiff. Yes. Councilmember Jones. Yes. Thank you, Council. Unanimous approval. Welcome to the neighborhood, Mr. Dickey. We're thrilled to have you. We, I, we like to be at neighbors. Thank you very much. Okay, we're at 9D. Consider action to approve resolution number R2018.08 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, awarding a master contract for the purchase and delivery of Harmsco filter cartridges to Ryan Herco Flow Solutions in the amount of $140.36 and $394.88 per unit as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing city manager to execute all necessary documents providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date, Mr. Job. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So what you have before you is a copy of the contract and the RFP that was written. And the reason we brought this to you is uh, you seek, because it's a cumulative purchasing process, although each section is, is much cheaper than what we have to go out for bid for, overall the contract will be $140,000 or more, uh, depending on flow and things of that nature. Just to remind you, what we're getting this for is the, uh, the plant at the Willow, uh, location you can see the filters there they have pre filters and post filters um, these are the kind of bacteria that cannot be killed by chlorine so they have to be filters as a requirement for the TCEQ so this is just a contract that gets us in line to better known as the heavy jeebies that's correct how, how does this price compare to what we've paid in the past uh, it's actually lower I move to approve I have a motion to approve from Mayor Pro Tem Schiff. Second. I have a second from Council Member Ennis. Mr. Job, did we let you? Did you say all you wanted to say? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other discussion from Council? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Schiff. Yes. Council Member Ennis. Yes. Council Member Jones. Yes. Thank you very much. I always want to be respectful of staff putting the presentation together, but cheaper and it makes you want to drink your water. That seems like a win-win. Okay, um, City Council shall convene into closed executive session pursuant to section 551.086 of the Texas Government Code to discuss competitive rates between Lower Colorado River Authority, LCRA, and Bastrop Power and Light. City Council shall convene into closed executive session to pursuant to section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code to deliberate about economic development project known as Project Revolution by the Bastrop Economic Development Corporation. It is 10.53 and we are now in executive session. Okay, it's 10.42 and I'm calling us back into regular session. There will be no actions. Take 1042. No. 11:42. Does say 11:42? Okay. Yeah, it really is 11:42. Sorry. It's 11:42. We're back in a regu into regular session. There will be no actions taken as Move a for adjournment. I have a motion. Second. And second. And we are adjourned at 11:42. Thank you very much. <laughs>